started as an effort by a charismatic preacher to build a new society, but it ended, of course, with the tragic deaths of more than 900 people. Here's NBC's Joe Fryer. Jonestown was supposed to be a paradise in the South American jungle. It was anything but. The saddest part about this tragedy is that good, decent people died who were well-intentioned. The story begins in America during the 1970s when Jim Jones created a religious movement called People's Temple. The charismatic minister fought for civil rights and had a multiracial family. It was the original Rainbow family. Including his adopted son, Jim Jones Jr. Did his message at the time resonate with you? Yes, yes, yes. No isms, no sexism, racism. But in the new book, The Road to Jonestown, author Jeff Gwynn details how Jones started to change. He's convinced himself that he is some sort of superhuman martyr. Jones persuaded nearly a thousand followers to move to a remote jungle in Guyana. The concept was to build a new world. A socialist utopia. Jonestown was described as this paradise, and it was not. Former member Leslie Wagner Wilson says followers were overworked and underfed. And then as time wore on, I realized that there was no future in Jonestown. Jim became increasingly paranoid. Jones was obsessed with revolutionary suicide. He felt followers should be prepared to die for their cause, even having them drink fruit punch he claimed was poison. Only after most of the people drank the liquid did he tell them, it's not poison, I was just testing you. In November 1978, a concerned congressman, Leo Ryan, flew to Guyana to investigate, accompanied by NBC News. While well, some followers praised Jonestown, others wanted out. What is your wish today? To go back, go back home and go home. As the congressman left, he took 15 defectors with him, angering Jones. People play games, friend. They lie, they lie. What can I do about lies? Are you people going to leave us? I just beg you, please leave us. He ordered gunmen to follow the group to the nearby airstrip, where they opened fire. Five were killed, including Congressman Ryan, NBC correspondent Don Harris, and cameraman Bob Brown. Sound engineer Steve Sung and field producer Robert Flick escaped, as did Ryan Aid and future Congresswoman Jackie Speer. Back at the commune, Jones gathered his followers for a final sermon. We've had as much of this world as you're going to get. Let's just be done with it. Let's be done with the agony of it. This time, Jones served a punch spiked with cyanide. More than 900 died, 300 of them children. Jones shot himself. We know from autopsies conducted later that a considerable number of people were held and forcibly injected with the poison. In the end, how many relatives did you lose? I lost 11 relatives. Wagner Wilson and her three-year-old lived because they were part of a small group that escaped during the confusion that morning, hiking through more than 30 miles of dense jungle to safety. How scared were you to try to escape? I was terrified. I was waiting for a bullet to hit at any moment. I was prepared to die on that day. I don't know how I can ever describe it in words. Jim Jones Jr., 18 at the time, lost his wife, but he lived because he was in Georgetown, Guyana's capital, as part of his frequent public relations work for the temple. So the million dollar question is, would I have done it? I can't say I would, but I can't say I wouldn't have. That shows how much power Jones had. And part of that, I believe, is because we all are looking for a place to fit into the world. We're looking for love, we're looking for acceptance, and Jim Jones provided that. Today, a memorial in Oakland serves as a remembrance for those who died, predominantly African Americans and the elderly, whom Jones's initial message resonated with. I think the lessons of Jonestown is to really go within so you don't have to go without. It's better to live for a cause than die for it. Despite what happened, the minister's son still goes by the name Jim Jones Jr. I'm proud of the upbringing and education I was given. That's a lot to be proud of. I also have to accept the horrific tragedy that my father caused, but he caused it, not me. For today, Joe Fryer, NBC News. When looking back, I remember the headlines around that time, and it was just, you almost couldn't even get your arms around the idea of what had happened there.
It's unfathomable. I don't, and I don't think there's been anything like that since. It's just uh, it's so many minors, over 300 children. Yeah, mm, so sad. Hello, today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there, and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.